Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another Pushing Film live stream. My name's Hashem, you're watching Pushing Film. Thanks for joining today. So if you haven't been to one of these live streams, you haven't watched one before, I go over a book that I have in my uh, collection of photo books over there. And uh, ideally a photo book that has a lot of film photography, but not always. And uh, just something that might inspire you because I know it usually inspires me to look through a photo book. And today's photo book is uh, Stephen Shaw's Uncommon Places. It's a pretty big one, actually. I'm going to move back just so you can see the um, sort of size and heft of this book. But yeah, that's how these work. If you have seen one before, you know how it works. Uh, I try not to share too much of the book. It's just to give you a little bit of a taster to kind of see if uh, this book would resonate with you. If you have not uh, seen the work of the photographer, for example, like I had never seen when, uh, when it came to Stephen Shaw, it could be a little bit of an expose, like a taster, so to speak, to let you know whether or not it could be a, a book you might be interested in purchasing, or at the very least, uh, looking more deeply into the work of that photographer. So, yeah, let me know how you're all doing. I am um, noticing there's a new thing with YouTube uh, with the live streams to enable subscribers only to live chat. And I have noticed in the past, sometimes you get a lot of spam messages on the live chat and, you know, really unproductive stuff. And I'm not sure if I want to use this feature. I'm testing it at the moment just to see if it's worth it or not. But if you are watching live um, and you are subscribed, let me know if you think it's a good idea or not. Otherwise, I'm just going to turn it off. I don't think it's a big deal, but it could be a good way to kind of filter who is interacting during these live chats. Okay, so if you are watching this post stream, there is a little bit of an introduction and preamble first. If you're just here to see the contents of the book, uh, you can feel free to skip ahead. And the way that will be done is just sort of through this uh, overhead view I have on the camera next to me on a C stand here. But the story behind my copy of Stephen Shaw's Uncommon Places was uh, it's quite an interesting one. And uh, I was browsing online for photo books as I do. And I had obviously heard of Stephen Shaw's work, at least in passing, but I wasn't very familiar with it. And I saw on Amazon a copy of this book or, you know, that they were selling this book at a pretty heavy discount at the time. And I shared that on my Instagram story for other people's benefits because I didn't really buy it. I wasn't familiar enough with Stephen Shaw. I thought, you know, I don't really know his photography that well. I don't know if I want to buy it. So I shared it online. Um, saying, you know, I would buy this if I had the extra money, but like anyone out there who's a fan of Stephen Shaw, check it out. It's whatever such and such a price. I can't remember now. But then um, my partner, Sarah, being as nice as she is, she bought it by surprise. It was the last copy and she surprised um, me or us with it to add to the collection. And uh, I'm really grateful because through this book, I've discovered Stephen Shaw's work and it's really brilliant. If you really love color photography, it's worth um, familiarizing yourself at least with some of his work, whether it's through this book or another one or otherwise. Um, it's some really great stuff. And I think, you know, if you're familiar with maybe William Eggleston, that's probably the closest photographer I can compare him to. Not that it's really a close comparison or that it's worth comparing photographers like that, but in the sense of those American urban landscapes of the 1970s, that's what you're going to find in this book. And he also has that sort of eye for the snapshot aesthetic of everyday scenes and places and um, what might seem really mundane or banal on the surface, but uh, has a lot more if you really, you know, look deeper into it. All right. So let's just get straight into it. Give you a bit of an idea of what the book contains and um, excuse the view. It's a bit long, this book, so it's a bit hard to kind of get it all on camera, but I think this works pretty well. So it does have a little bit of a dust cover. You can see there. Um, and the cover image is different behind the dust cover. But we'll leave that on for now. And as I mentioned, most of the work in this book is of the 1970s you know, uh, 1970s America. So if you're a fan of that alone, I think you'll like this, um, you know, has that nostalgic feeling, at least now when you look at it this many decades later. 
But Stephen Shaw uh, shot pretty much everything, I think, at least in this book, on large format, I believe 8x10. So every image in this book has an incredible amount of detail and ability to describe the scenes that he's photographing. They're often uh, landscapes or interiors or even portraits that you might find in this book. An incredible eye for color, composition, and uh, just sort of placement of items within the scene as you sort of look throughout. So I believe it would have almost all been done on a tripod. So a very slow and composed sort of eye um, that you can kind of see through these photos. But just the color for me is what really um, sells it. Just beautiful color work. I probably assume it was all, if it was eight by 10, some color negative sheets, maybe. I'm not sure, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, yeah, the, the great thing about large format is it has an incredible ability to to really um, uh, describe what, what the camera sees in incredible detail. And uh, if you look at William Eggleston's work that was mostly done on 35mm, the stark contrast, even though some of the scenes might be similar and the compositional techniques um, might be a little bit similar, uh, Stephen Shaw's for work for me is a lot more refined and uh, uh, you know has the ability to kind of spend a lot more time on, on one photograph um, for the viewer. But yeah, just looking through, just giving you a quick idea. I'm not going to spoil too much of it, but the book is really well printed. Uh, yeah, nice quality. I like that the, each photo has its own page because it has that big wide format. You don't really get uh, any of those photos that are printed across both pages, which is perfect given the fact that these are eight by 10, it's that four by five ratio. So the way that the images lie on the pages is really nice as well. That's another thing I really like about it. And yeah, you can just start to see some examples of portraits that you might find scattered throughout the book. Um, the sequencing is really nice. So a lot of thought went into it. It does remind me a little bit of uh, Joel Meyerowitz's 8x10 work in some ways, but there is definitely a, a unique difference between the two, a very different eye. Um, but just the fact that Meyerowitz, you know, shot these types of landscapes on 8x10 during similar time periods as well. So there are some visual aesthetic similarities. This one, I think a lot of you guys have probably seen this before. Um, there's a lot of popular photographs of his in this book. And I think, uh, you know, Contemporary photographers uh, are hugely inspired by by his work. If you look at uh, the fact that a lot of this stuff is shot in the 1970s, but then you open up, you know, something like Instagram and you look at a lot of film photographers, especially, I think are inspired by this um, new topographics style of work and um, you know way of seeing and composing, and even the color um, sort of scheme with people that shoot portrait, for example. Um, go for this type of look uh, and, you know, feeling of nostalgia. And on an interesting note, I've linked a documentary if you want a bit more of an introduction to Stephen Shaw. In the description of this video, it's a Nowness documentary. Um, it's only five minutes long, so it's really easy watch. But in that documentary, he talks about how, you know, during the current day, people might say about his work is that it evokes a feeling of nostalgia. But then he kind of replied that um, back in 1974, when he was shooting these, whether it was a hotel room or something, um, there there was no, uh, you know, look, it didn't look nostalgic at all. What he, I think he said, his quote was, this just looks like what things look like. And I love that quote from that documentary. And it's it's a really interesting note that, you know, even though today people might, including myself, shoot things that might look nostalgic or vintage or whatever it is. Uh, there's a lot of power in shooting the everyday and mundane as it stands today because years later, it gains interest or it can gain that level of interest um, to, to certain audiences at least. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like these photos here definitely give me that, uh, you know, color aesthetic of, of color negative films like Portra. So I'm not sure what he actually shot on, but a lot of this is from 1974. And what Stephen Shaw was known for doing, and you can kind of see a little bit about it in the back of this book, actually, is he would just spend, you know, extended periods of time staying in hotel rooms 
and going out and photographing and documenting his uh his shooting and his activities and everything in a journal and you can kind of see he would keep little bits of memorabilia in the back of the book here i'll just give you a quick look at this it's really quite interesting um like postcards and whatever but then this is a a page out of his journal for example and he would log every single day and uh what he ate for breakfast what he ate for lunch dinner night uh you know interesting things uh receipts here from where he stayed and it's just great like and then he has maybe i'm not sure if these are just little contact prints that he might have had made or polaroids probably not polaroids but some photos are in there as well so he would sort of log everything you can see the date stamped on the corner of each page there july 7th july um, 8th the 9th all of 1973 let's see what do you have for breakfast here holiday in omelet <laughs> so yeah just really interesting stuff just a really nice deep dive into the photographer here with this interview as well um you can see just sort of questions and answers with stephen shaw but yeah beautiful stuff a book you can spend a lot of time on and well worth it in my opinion so if you're looking for something to add to your collection if you're a big fan of this style of work this uh you know great color work new topographic style of photography and uh, you're not familiar with Stephen Shaw, definitely check it out or go ahead and check out some more of his work elsewhere. Let me know what you think. I'm just um, check, I'm not sure if the live chat is working. I've got one comment here. First time catching a stream, love your work and love Joel Meyerowitz. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for saying that. Um, Mediocre.mp4s, yeah. I'm a big fan of Joel Meyerowitz as well. So there is a bit of similarity between the two here. And um, yeah, just a great book overall. And I can see, like, for example, uh, Carl McDougall, who I'm a big fan of, a more contemporary photographer and YouTuber. If you're not familiar with him, um, I think definitely photographers like him would be inspired by, uh, you know, legend like Stephen Shaw. When I look at images like this, at least, and not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's just to say that uh, his work has inspired, you know, many generations after his and he is still uh, active as far as i know i'm not too sure um, but if you look at that documentary the nowness uh, documentary that i've linked in the description of the video it's well worth a watch and it's only five or so minutes but it'll also link you it'll youtube will suggest other interviews and documentaries and videos about stephen shaw uh, i haven't looked into many other videos on this book i just didn't have the time to really scour through everything but definitely, you know, you'll find a fair bit on YouTube if you are interested in finding out more. Uh, I've got a few more uh, comments in the chat. Viva. Hey, Jess, how's it going? Hello. Chiming in. Always stoked to catch Pushing Film live stream. Yeah, thanks. Um, you know, if anyone tuning in now, I'm about to tie it up because I didn't want to spend too long spoiling this book for you. It's well worth, um, you know, getting, having a look at one yourself if you ever want to, if you get the chance. It's quite a good, big book, a lot of pages and it's worth having in the collection um as i mentioned mine was from amazon sarah had bought it uh you know for me as a surprise um but i've linked the uh, amazon purchase link in the description of the video it's an affiliate link so if you want to you know use that if you want buy it elsewhere really up to you but if you do use the link in the description i really appreciate it it throws me a small commission using amazon affiliate links but uh yeah wherever you might find this book even if you can borrow it off a friend i definitely recommend it and yeah, I think um, I'll probably sum things up there. And I just want to say thanks to everyone for the support on the last video, on the X-Pro3 video. I know I'd had a bit of an absence for a few weeks, but there was a lot going on uh, at that time. But as soon as I had the chance, I'd already returned the X-Pro3. I got onto, you know, editing that video together, putting it out. And the response was really uh, nice. I really appreciate everyone's uh, watching, commenting, even though there hadn't been anything for a few weeks but rest assured i'm you know i'm back things are kind of stable again and i'm looking forward to putting out more videos what am i currently working on so i think i've got a review on another camera coming up i've got uh another video on my scanning workflow a lot of people have been asking for that to do, do a redo of how i scan my film from kind of start to beginning and uh things have been updated such as negative lab pro since i've done my last video but yeah, much appreciated. Thanks for tuning in. And if you want to uh, join the chat, you can uh, log on to the Discord server and join that. If you're not already on there, I'll put a link to that in the description of the video as well. So Discord is just a great platform to connect with other like-minded people 
in film photography, the Pushing Film one I've made has multiple sort of channels and topics you can log into, whether it's for technical advice or feedback on your photos or whatever it is. And we uh, use it to organize some meetups here in Melbourne. And as the city is starting to open back up, we are able to do meetups again. So I'm going to probably look to organize another one soon. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.